discuss the top 5 interview questions from the topic SQL, that is structured query language. These questions are frequently being asked by the top companies during the interview. So, let's begin. So, our first question is, what is the difference between delete and truncate? The delete statement is used when we want to remove a particular row or some records from the table. Whereas, the truncate statement will delete the entire rows from the table. Delete is a DML command, where DML stands for Data Manipulation Language and Truncate is a DDL command, where DDL stands for Data Definition Language. Truncate is faster than the delete statement. Moving to the second question. What are the different subsets of SQL? The various subsets of SQL are number 1, DDL. It stands for Data Definition Language. It allows us to perform various operations on the database such as create, drop, alter, etc. Second, DML. It stands for the Data Manipulation Language. And the DML allows us to access and manipulate data. It helps us to insert, update, and delete, also retrieve data from the database. Third, DCL. The DCL stands for Data Control Language. The DCL allows us to control access to the database. For example, grant revoke access permission. Lastly, number four, TCL stands for Transaction Control Language. These commands are used to manage transaction in the database. These are mainly used to manage changes made by the DML statesman. For example, rollback. Moving to our third question. What do you mean by a table and a field in a SQL? A table is a collection of data organized in a terms of row and columns. In the picture, you can see the example of a table and the name of the table is student. It is a organized data in terms of row and columns. So what is a field? A table that has a specified number of columns are called fields. So in the table student, we can see there are four fields, namely student ID, name, address, and marks. Moving to our fourth question. What is a primary key? This is a very common term that we hear in SQL. A primary key is a field in a table which uniquely identifies each record in the database table. That is, it's a combination of fields which uniquely specifies a row. So, it is a special kind of unique key and it has implicit non-null constraint. A primary key cannot have a null value. And one more important thing about primary key is that a table can have only one primary key, which may consist of single or multiple fields. In the example, we see in this table, student ID is the primary key. That means with the help of this unique student ID, we can identify each and every student uniquely. Moving to our last question and the fifth one, what is a foreign key? This is another important thing in SQL that is related with the primary key. A foreign key is a table or we can say it's a field in one table that can be related to the primary key in another table. The table with a foreign key is often called as a child table. And the table with the primary key is often called as a reference table. That means foreign key and primary key are both related to each other. The relationship needs to be created between these two tables by referencing foreign key with the primary key of another table. Here we can see an example. In this example, we see in the table, there are two columns, course ID and the course name where course ID is the primary key and this course ID is the foreign key in another table that has got four columns, student ID, name, first name, last name and course ID. That means 
the one which is primary key in one table becomes the foreign key in another table. Today, I am going to discuss the part 2 of top 5 interview question from the topic SQL, that is structured query language. These questions are frequently being asked by the top companies during the interview. So, let's begin. Question 1. What are constraints? Constraints in SQL are used to specify the limit on the data type of the table. It can be specified while creating or altering the data table statement. The types of constraints are not null constraint, check constraint, unique constraint, primary key constraint, foreign key constraint and default constraint. So in other words, we can say SQL constraint can be at a column or a table label. Column label constraints apply to specific columns in a table and do not specify a column name except the check constraints. That is, they refer to the column that they follow. The names are specified by the table label constraints of the column to which they apply. This is all about the constraint. Moving to the next question. Question 2. What is a database? The term database is quite known to most of us. Now, database is nothing but an organized form of data for easy access, storing, retrieval and managing of data. This is also known as a structured form of data which can be accessed in many ways. So in other words, we can say a database is an organized collection of structured information or data typically stored electronically in a computer system. A database is usually controlled by the database management system that is DBMS. Example of database are school management database and bank management database. Moving to the third question. Question 3. What are entities and relationships? An entity can be a real world object with an existence. It can be either tangible or intangible that can be easily identified. In the diagram, it is given a college database in which students, professors, workers, departments and projects can be referred to as entities. Each entity has some associated properties that provide it an identity. Now coming to the relationship. Relations or links between entities have something to do with each other is known as relationships. In the same diagram, we can see the professor can belong to the mathematics department, can belong to the physics department and can belong to the management department. That means the professor and the respective department have got a relationship between each other. We can consider another example like a company database in which the employees table in a company database can be associated with the salary table in the same database. Moving to the fourth question. List the different types of relationship in a SQL. Now there are three types of relationship in a SQL namely one to one, one to many and many to many. Starting one by one. Firstly, one to one. The one to one relationship can be defined as the relationship between the tables in which each record in a table is associated with the maximum of one record in another table. Here are two tables of author and books in which a particular author is associated with a particular book in the another table. Coming to the next one, one to many. This type of relationship is something where a record in a table is associated with multiple records in another table. Here also we have got two tables, author and book. And a particular author is associated with more than one record in the book table. Moving to the last one, 
many to many this type of relationship is used when multiple instances on both sides are needed for defining a relationship in the example we consider again two tables author and books and they have got many to many relationship between them moving to the fifth and the last question what do you mean by dbms what are its different types now dbms stands for database management system and it is a application software that interacts with the users applications and the database itself to capture and analyze data we can also say a dbms manages incoming data organizes it and provides way for the data to be modified or extracted by the users or other programs remember a database is always a structured collection of data now coming to its different types there are two types of dbms namely relational database management system and non relational database management system a relational database management system is somewhere where the data is stored in the relations or table example mysql a non relational database management system is something where there is no concept of relations tuples and attributes example mongodb this is all about the dbms and today i am going to discuss the part 3 of top 5 interview question from the topic sql that is structured query language this questions are frequently being asked by the top companies during the interview so let's begin question 1 what is a unique key a unique key constraint uniquely identifies each record in a database that is we can say a unique key is a single field or combination of fields that ensure all the values going to store into the column will be unique this provides the uniqueness for the column or set of columns moving to the second question why are sql function used sql function are used for the following purposes like to perform some calculations on the data to modify individual data items to manipulate the output to format dates and numbers to convert the data types we can also say that sql function are simply sub programs which are commonly used and reused throughout the sql database applications for processing or manipulating data moving to the third question what are aggregate and scalar functions aggregate functions are used to, to evaluate mathematical calculation and returns a single value this calculations are done from the columns in a table for example max count etc are calculated with respect to numeric other than this we have average and mean now coming to the scalar function the scalar function return a single value based on the input value for example u case now are calculated with respect to string other than this we can also consider the mid function and the round function moving to the fourth question what is the select statement the select operator in sql is used to select data from a database that is we can say it is used to retrieve or fetch data from a database the data returned is stored in its result table called the result set with the select clause of a select command statement we can specify the columns that we want to be displayed in the query result the syntax of the select statement is select star from db dot student where db students is a database moving to the last and fifth question what do you mean by data integrity data integrity defines the accuracy as well as the consistency 
of the data stored in a database. We can also say that data integrity is used to maintain accuracy and consistency of data in a table. It also defines integrity constraint to enforce business rules on the data when it is entered into an application or a database. We can implement this by using the constraint. This is all about this question. I hope this question are helpful for you all. Thank you for watching the video.